the Win Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I.E. Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 9. His Fame Shakes the World, Chapter 11, The Challenge. Stop Fighting? The 80,000 viewers all began to mumble in unison upon hearing these words from the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson. Some even began to quietly curse him. Lily and Olivier were definitely two of the most brilliant men in the entirety of the Yulon continent. Many warriors would literally be willing to give up their lives if it meant they could see such a battle between two such genius scent level experts. But just as the battle was getting to the most exciting part, the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, had popped out. How could they not be angry? But the person stopping the battle was Hadeson, the number one saint level in the world. It's best if we have this battle come to an end here and now. Housekeeper Hiri's forehead was covered in sweat. Not just Housekeeper Hiri. Hillman, Wharton, and the others were all worrying for Linley as well. Olivier's performance hadn't been one whit inferior to Linley's, and that obsidian sword technique seemed to be very strange as well. Linley's profound truths of the earth was powerful, true. But would the attack which Olivier had developed based on his understanding of the elemental laws of darkness necessarily be any weaker than Linley's profound truths of the earth? Hadn't Olivier himself said that he was unable to control the power of the obsidian sword once unleashed? Because the monolithic sword Saint Hadeson had suddenly interrupted, Lily and Olivier were standing on opposite ends of the Colosseum in midair, staring at each other, with Hadeson between them. Three Saint level experts. Two were ultimate geniuses, while the third was reputed to be the most powerful Saint level expert in the world. Stop fighting? Olivier glanced at Hadeson. Linley glanced at Hadeson as well. This Hadeson's power really is astonishing. That technique he displayed just now definitely wasn't just based on pure battle chi. It should have been some sort of defensive technique developed through his mastery of the laws of the earth. Linley could totally sense that the earth-colored wave Hadeson had emitted earlier contained layers of wave-like energy. However, he wouldn't necessarily be able to withstand my profound truths of the earth. Linley was still extremely confident in the power of his ultimate attack. In truth, when charging against each other just now, both Linley and Olivier had both been in the charge up phase. At Linley and Olivier's levels, as peak stage saint level experts, they wouldn't waste any energy at all. Both the profound truths of the earth as well as Olivier's attack would wait until when the blows landed on the opponent before suddenly allowing their power to erupt. Many of the victims of the profound truths of the earth, when first struck by the adamantine heavy sword, initially hadn't sensed any danger at all. But then suddenly, they would sense layers upon layers of vibrational wave attacks transmitting into their internal organs. Just then, Hadeson had been able to push aside both Linley and Olivier with one technique, true. But that was because neither Linley nor Olivier had used their ultimate attacks against Hadeson. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been so easy for Hadeson to block them. Ha ha, Olivier, Linley. Emperor Johann stood up now. Under the gaze of 80,000 people, Emperor Johann walked off the judge's platform and said in a loud voice, Olivier, Linley, this battle between the two of you has already been an incredible sight, and expanded our horizons. What's more, neither of you have a serious grudge against each other that can only be resolved in death. Emperor Johann didn't wish for either Linley or Olivier to die. If these two geniuses remained alive, then the O'Brien Empire's influence in the Yulan continent would be even stronger. Linley and Olivier glanced at each other. Fine. Olivier nodded, 
laughing calmly. When Brother Linley had received my light shadow sword attack, I already had lost my desire to continue fighting. However, I was partially at fault in this affair as well. Olivier looked at Linley. Brother Linley's power exceeded my expectations. I didn't expect that the sword techniques he revealed at the beginning were just the surface of his abilities. Olivier revealed a smile towards Linley. I admit, Brother Linley's power is no weaker than my own. Clearly, Olivier was indicating a willingness to be friendly towards Linley. He even addressed him as Brother Linley. The obsidian sword's technique was extremely powerful, but Linley's adamantine heavy sword technique was also extremely powerful. If these two geniuses really did insist on going all out today, and fight to the point of death, it really would be a waste and not worth it. Since Olivier had already spoken in a conciliatory manner, Linley wouldn't press things either. After all, he had just entered the O'Brien Empire recently. It was best that he not create too many enemies. Then let's have this battle come to an end. Linley's calm voice echoed in the Coliseum, and the 80,000 viewers understand that the battle between these two ultimate geniuses wouldn't continue today. But immediately afterwards, an ear-splitting, thunderous applause filled the entire Coliseum. All of the watchers were cheering at the top of their lungs. Although the duel had come to an end, they were still uncontrollably excited. Olivier. 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 Linley. 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 Those joyous, thunderous waves of sound assaulted each person's ears. All of them were cheering for their idols. In this moment, they had already forgotten that today's duel had actually been supposed to be between Wharton and Bloomer. Clearly. Although Wharton and Bloomer were geniuses, compared to their respective elder brothers, there was still a huge gap between them in every aspect. The astonishing power and might of Linley and Olivier had totally overawed every single person in the Colosseum. Seeing the two end their battle, the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, felt very gratified as well. At this time, Linley immediately flew down towards his own side. The joyous roars of the Colosseum continued unabated. By now, in the eyes of the crowd, Linley had already been vaulted to the same level and status of Olivier. If one factored in Linley's youth and his mastery of stone sculpting, perhaps Linley was even more worthy than Olivier of the title of prodigy. Big Bro. From his seated position, Wharton saw Linley fly down. He immediately called out to him in an excited voice. Lord. Barker and his brothers went to welcome him as well. Jen, Rebecca, and Lena all let out sighs of relief as they, too, went forward to excitedly welcome him. Linley returned to his normal human form and put on a long robe. Lord, keep fighting. That Olivier definitely isn't a match for you, your lordship. I refuse to believe he'll be able to withstand your profound truths of the earth attack. Gates said in a quiet, unhappy voice. Barker and the others all knew exactly how powerful Linley's profound truths of the earth was. They all believed Linley was capable of winning. But Linley shook his head and laughed. Don't underestimate Olivier. For him to be able to create that special attack, Light Shadow Sword, means that the power of his Obsidian Sword would definitely be astonishing. You must consider this, I was able to gain insights into certain profound truths, but does that mean others are unable to? The elemental laws are as vast and boundless as the ocean, and my insights are but a tiny drop of water in that ocean. Barker and the others all nodded as though they understood. But right at this moment, a voice rang out from midair above the Colosseum. Mr. Hadeson, do you still remember that battle between us six years ago? Linley immediately turned his head to stare at the sky. 
The person who spoke those words was the prodigy sword saint, Olivier. Olivier's eyes were filled with light, and he stared at the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, who was just about to fly downwards. Hadeson came to a halt, turning to look at Olivier. Nodding, he said, six years ago, on a night with a full moon. Of course I remember that battle. Your speed left a deep impression on me. Olivier looked at Hadeson. Solemnly, he said, I roamed through many kingdoms and gained victory in all of my battles against the various experts of the other empires. I lost to you, and only you. Six years dot six full years. During these six years, I developed my Blackstone sword technique specifically to deal with you. The Colosseum instantly went silent. It seemed as though there was quite a bit of history between these two saint level experts. Oh, to deal with me? Hadson laughed calmly. You believe that your obsidian sword is capable of breaking my defense? One of the most important reasons why Hadeson was known as the monolithic sword saint was because he possessed an extremely powerful defense. Many peak stage saint level experts weren't able to even break through it, much less injure him. Olivier thought back to their battle six years ago. That was an utter humiliation. No matter how he attacked Hadeson, he couldn't scratch Hadeson at all. Instead, he was lightly wounded by the impact of each blow. What's more, Hadeson hadn't been slower than him at all. Domination Although Olivier was also a peak stage saint level, compared to Hadeson, he had been utterly dominated. It was as though they were on totally different levels. His reputation as the number one saint level expert was definitely not unearned. We'll know whether or not I can break your defense if we give it a test, right? Mr. Hadeson, today at the Coliseum, I formally issue you a challenge. If you accept, then in three months, we'll duel outside the city, Olivier said. Olivier had consumed a large amount of his battle chi today, in his battle against Linley. He was no longer in peak shape. Challenge? Hadson furrowed his forehead, but a hint of a smile was on his face. The Colosseum immediately began to be filled with roars of excitement. The prodigy sword saint, Olivier, had openly challenged the monolithic sword saint, Hadson. Many people were so excited that their faces were turning red. Everyone turned to look at the monolithic sword saint, Hadson. Fine. I accept. Hadson smiled and nodded. Three months from now, I will definitely sample the power of the obsidian sword technique which you developed over these past six years. It definitely will not disappoint you. Olivier's face was filled with the utmost confidence. The smile on Hadson's face became even brighter. Six years ago, Having been dominated to the point where he had no fighting spirit left, Olivier had learned how powerful Hadeson's defense was. But Olivier was still this confident. Olivier was no fool. Clearly, he must really have something he felt he could count on. Won't disappoint me? I truly hope it will be as you say. Hadeson was filled with some anticipation. It had been a long time since he had encountered an opponent who could pose a threat to him. In three short steps, the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, somehow once more appeared at the judge's platform. As for Olivier, he flew to the side of his little brother. The entire Colosseum was filled with the sound of murmuring discussions. Linley had suddenly taken to the field of battle and easily defeated Kenyon, and then had fought Olivier to a standstill. And now, Olivier had challenged the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, to a battle. This chain of events had truly excited them no end. Everyone, 
At this moment, the silver-haired old man returned to the dueling platform. Just now, I was about to announce the results of the duel. But I didn't expect that Lord Olivier would arrive. The silver-haired old man's face was covered in smiles. That made me extremely excited. This was the most exciting day in my long life. Lord Olivier's battle against Lord Limley is something I trust none of you will ever forget for the rest of your lives. Just look at the dueling platform, and then look at those flagpoles. The battle just now had caused the already cracked dueling platform to be riddled with gaping holes. Most of the flagpoles around the dueling platform had been snapped in half, and many people's clothes had been blown to different corners of the Colosseum. It was a disaster scene. But this disaster scene made the 80,000 people begin to laugh. Ha ha, enough talk. Everyone already knows the results of the earlier duel between Wharton and Bloomer. Bloomer managed to squeak out a victory by a narrow margin. The silver-haired old man laughed towards Emperor Johan. His Imperial Majesty has a few words he wishes to say. I hope everyone will listen closely. After speaking, the silver-haired old man left the platform. Emperor Johann now rose to his feet. Some people in the Colosseum looked towards Emperor Johann, while the others looked at Linley, Olivier, and Haidson, the scent-level experts. Today has been the most exciting day in our life. Whether it was the duel between Wharton and Bloomer, or their brothers, Lily and Olivier, what we witnessed was extremely thrilling. Emperor Johann revealed a hint of a smile on his face. Everyone knows that both Wharton and Bloomer have asked for the hand of our daughter, the seventh princess, in marriage. After seeing both of these brilliant young men in action today, we have already made our decision. We have decided that on March 15th, at the Marshall Palace, we shall openly announce who will be the one to wed our seventh princess. Book 9 His Fame Shakes the World, Chapter 12, Front Courtyard as Busy as a Marketplace Linley, Wharton, Bloomer, and Olivier almost simultaneously turned to stare at Emperor Johann in surprise. On March 15th, the Emperor would announce who would marry the seventh princess. In the past, Emperor Johann had kept delaying, without seeming to be the slightest bit impatient. Neither Wharton nor Bloomer had imagined that Emperor Johann would suddenly say such a thing. Nina. Wharton turned to look at Nina. Nina shook her head, also confused. I don't know anything. My imperial father didn't tell me anything about this. She, too, looked frantically at Emperor Johann, but as the seventh princess was a member of imperial clan, her marriage was not something she could design on her own. It was completely up to Emperor Johann to decide. Princess. At this moment, a palace attendant came over. His Imperial Majesty is about to leave. It is time to return to the palace. Nina nodded. Emperor Johann had forbidden her to leave the palace. The only reason she was able to meet Wharton this time was because of this duel in the Colosseum. After bidding farewell to Wharton, Nina followed the Imperial clan back and left. Lily and Wharton's forces also withdrew from the Colosseum. Olivier. As Linley left via one of the passageways, he glanced at Olivier, and saw that Olivier was also glancing at him. These two ultimate geniuses exchanged stares, then turned their heads and left the Colosseum. Ever since the 80,000 onlookers had witnessed the events in the Colosseum on this day, February 4, the news about the duel which had taken place at the Colosseum took the Imperial capital by storm, filling the entire imperial capital with excitement. Many people from other cities and other provinces, upon leaving, 
brought back the news of this duel to their own hometowns as well. Linley had easily defeated Kenyon, and then fought to a stalemate with Olivier. Olivier had then challenged Hadeson. These three events quickly became well known, and the rumors of these events spread out at astonishing speed. Linley's reputation quickly became well known in the imperial capital, and beyond as well, spreading in every direction. The Imperial Capital Boulder Street Outside Count Wharton's manor, one carriage after another came, all filled with people coming to visit Linley. Within the inner courtyard of the manor, Linley, Yale, and Reynolds were seated together, chatting and laughing. Although there were many nobles and famous people clustered together at the front courtyard, Linley couldn't be bothered to pay attention to them. Actually, those nobles expected and understood this in heart. Would someone of Linley's status go personally welcome them? At Linley's level, ordinary, worldly trappings of power no longer meant anything to him. Even the Emperor would be extremely courteous when dealing with saint-level experts and wouldn't dare to put on airs. Without question. Now that the Baruch clan had produced someone like Linley, even if Linley were to never become a noble within the Empire and even though Wharton was just a count, the Baruch clan had naturally become an extremely surpassing clan within the Imperial capital. Third bro, you've been hiding your power and your talents, but now that you've exploded forth onto the scene, you've really shocked quite a few people. Yale laughed loudly. Reynolds nodded repeatedly as well. Right, right. I imagine the Radiant Church has a terrible headache right now. Yale and Reynolds knew about Linley's affairs with the Radiant Church. Given the Radiant Church's power, for them to kill Linley at his current level was virtually impossible. This was especially true given that Linley was currently in the Imperial capital of the O'Brien Empire. The Radiant Church wouldn't dare send any saint-level experts over, for fear that the War God would misunderstand. This was the War God's territory, after all. Dealing with the Radiant Church? Linley laughed calmly. I've already killed the principal target of my quest for revenge. As for dealing with the rest of the Radiant Church, I'm not in a particular rush. Right now, I'm no longer afraid of the people of the Radiant Church. But dealing with the Radiant Church. I don't have enough power yet. The Radiant Church had quite a few peak stage saint level experts. The currently reigning Holy Emperor, Hydens. The spiritual leader of the ascetics, Lord Fallen Leaf. The praetor of the ecclesiastical tribunal, Osno. Special executor, Stell. And the leader of the zealots. Five experts, with Stell most likely being the weakest of them. As for the other four, none of them could be underestimated. Even against Stell, Linley wouldn't be able to win that easily. The reason why Linley had been able to easily defeat Kenyon was only because Kenyon was nothing more than a mid-stage saint-level expert. When my human form reaches the saint level and my skills as Magus reach the saint level, Linley's eyes flashed with a fierce light. When your human form reaches the saint level, Yale and Reynolds exchanged glances. They couldn't help but feel worried for the future Radiant Church. If Linley were to reach the saint level in his human form, then as soon as he transformed, just relying on physical strength, battle chi, defense, and speed, he would already be at a terrifying level of power. Supreme warriors were hailed as the most powerful of saint levels. They were nothing to laugh at. Such a powerful foundation combined with Linley's profound truths of the wind and profound truths of the earth. They believed that once Linley reached the saint level in his human form, then his two profound truths would also advance in level. And then, once he reached the saint level as a magus, he would be invincible in close combat, and at long range, 
the spells of a saint level magus were unbeatable. If his opponents were to use human wave tactics, a single annihilating magical spell would be able to destroy them. Too terrifying. Yale and Reynolds were frightened just thinking about it. The current Linley was already a peak stage saint level expert. If in the future, his power increased tenfold in every aspect, who could possibly stop him? Enough about this topic for now. Linley laughed calmly. Yale laughed and nodded. Third bro, do you know? My old man keeps on telling me to handle this affair or handle that affair, but after hearing that you had arrived here, he's stopped pressing me. In fact, he supported me spending more time with you. I must say dot my conglomerate really did make a killing off this deal. We got you as one of our elders so cheaply. Previously, at the provincial capital of Basel, Yale had given Linley an elders medal. Even if you didn't give me that medal, if the Dawson conglomerate had any difficulties, given our relationship, boss Yale, of course I would help out. Linley laughed. Yale felt a sense of warmth and gratitude in his heart. Beautifully said. Come, cheers. Yale immediately raised his cup in a toast, and Linley and Reynolds joined him, laughing. People's hearts were hard to discern, especially after growing up. It would be hard for Yale, Linley, and Reynolds to easily trust people now, but towards those good friends they made in their carefree, worry-free childhood years, they felt nothing but the utmost trust. It is a rare thing for someone to be able to have a true bosom friend. Linley and the others all felt very fortunate to have such good brothers. Third bro. Reynolds pursed his lips. You really showed off your godlike power this time at the Coliseum. Even our Donstan clan has sent people to come meet you. They sent someone? Linley was startled. Who? One of my paternal uncles. Reynolds said disdainfully. But he didn't have a chance to even see you. Linley nodded. Linley had refused to meet with any of the people who had come to pay a visit with him. Even the people of the Imperial clan had been summarily ignored. If your clan truly wants to meet with me, just give me a heads up, and I'll go meet with them. He would of course give face to one of his brothers. No need. Reynolds shook his head. I really don't see eye to eye with the people in my clan. Anyhow, the point is, third bro, you've really become famous. This makes my life easier as well. Many people in the clan are now much nicer to me as well. They all know that I'm your bro. Chortling, Reynolds looked at Linley. Third bro, in the future, if anything good comes your way, you have to take care of me, your bro, you know. You little punk. Seeing the impish expression on Reynolds' face, Linley couldn't help but laugh while berating him. You've been in the army for seven or eight years now, but you still act this way. The four close friends of dormitory 1987. Yale was the playboy type, while Reynolds was the type who feared neither heaven nor earth and would dare to do anything. Third bro, boss Yale. I'm only this one way in front of you guys. In front of those common soldiers, I always have a hard ass look on my face. Reynolds intentionally put on a stern, solemn expression. It had to be said that once Reynolds hardened his face, he did indeed have the look of a soldier in his eyes and demeanor. After chatting and joking with his close friends, Linley's face grew solemn. Boss Yale fourth bro. There's something I need you two to help me plan out. What is it? Reynolds and Yale looked at Linley. Given Linley's current status, what did he have to worry about? This has to do with my little brother. That day, Emperor Johann publicly announced that on March 15th, he would openly announce at the Marshall Palace who the seventh princess will marry. 
Linley's face was very solemn. Reynolds and Yale both nodded. My little brother, Wharton, and the seventh princess share a deep love for each other. Without the seventh princess, I fear that my little brother will be in pain for a long, long time. I don't want to see something like that to happen once again, and to my own little brother. Linley's voice was very low. Reynolds and Yale exchanged glances. They still remembered how Linley had actually coughed out blood that year when he and Alice had broken up, and then carved out the sculpture awakening from the dream over ten days and ten nights, not drinking or eating anything. Although Linley didn't say anything, they both understood that this had deeply hurt Linley. Third bro, go ahead. Tell us what you want us to do. Yale said directly, and Reynolds nodded by his side as well. Linley nodded. Right now, I have two options planned. If Emperor Johann plans to choose my little brother, then that will be a joyous event. But dot if he chooses Bloomer. Linley's face turned cold. At that time, I won't give a damn about the fact that he's the Emperor, or how powerful Bloomer's older brother is. I will help my little brother and go bring the seventh princess out of the palace and allow the two of them to elope together. If anyone tries to stop me, I will kill them. A killing intent could be seen in Linley's eyes. Reynolds and Yale couldn't help but feel their hearts shiver. Others might not understand, but they understood clearly. The five Barker brothers which Linley had brought with him were actually undying warriors, and three of them had saint level power. And then there was the Black Cloud Panther and Bibi. Six saint level experts. Once Linley decided to go all out, especially with Bibi who was no weaker than Linley, the entire imperial capital would no doubt begin to tremble from the repercussions of six troublemaking saint level experts. I hope his imperial majesty chooses Wharton. Reynolds and Yale were both praying in their hearts. Third bro. Yale looked solemnly at Linley. Don't be impatient. Even if you have to bring the seventh princess out by force, there's no need to push things to such a state. I know. Linley laughed calmly. I'm only saying, if someone tries to stop me, then I'll kill them. My little brother and I naturally don't have as firm an understanding of the affairs of the Imperial Capital as your clans, which is why I hope the two of you can help me think about this issue. The Dunstan clan and the Dawson clan both had very deep roots of power, and knew many things about the events occurring in the Imperial Capital. Third bro, set your mind at ease. My Dawson conglomerate's forces are quite numerous. We even have a number of palace attendants and maids who will obey the words of the conglomerate. Yale said confidently. Money was a wondrous thing. The power of money could be extremely large. When I go back, I will speak with my old man. Don't worry. My old man will definitely help and support you. Yale laughed. Linley was certain about this as well. If the chairman of the Dawson conglomerate were to leak this information to the Emperor, he probably wouldn't see much of a benefit. After all, the Dawson conglomerate didn't lack for money. But as for experts, the Emperor couldn't simply order a saint level expert to serve the Dawson conglomerate, right? You should take primary responsibility for this affair of third bros. My clan's authority primarily resides in the military, after all. Reynolds knew his own limits. Linley nodded. Then I'll be counting on you. Boss Yale. Linley said seriously. Yale nodded confidently. After the deaths of his parents, Linley had only a single relative left, Wharton. No matter what, he wouldn't let his little brother be hurt. If Emperor Johann were to select Wharton, then that would be wonderful. 
but if he did an apostrophe t. Linney wasn't adverse to revealing the true depths of power available to him and forcibly bring Neiman out. Thank you for listening the audiobook series by Win Pei. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and peace. Wind pay.